Well, hi, and thank you for joining me in my shop. Today is uh, January 28th. Oh my gosh, almost the end of January. And I'll start with a mini weather report. Snowed overnight, sun shining this morning, minus 15 degrees. Snow coming later today, 15 centimeters. After, after lunch, just a few hours from now. Snow, 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 and cold. So uh, I'm getting a very late start here this morning, so I'm only going to focus on one aspect uh, of this uh, receiver. I spent a fair bit of time looking on the internet for a schematic, when I, I, and I could not find one when I suddenly realized there's one in the cabinet. Here it is. So I've, I've got this uh, image uh, on my computer so we can take a look at it and uh, study it. That's what we're going to start with in a moment. I think the first thing I want to look at is the output tube. How is the bias done on it? and uh, let's take a look at that. I think I already know because there's a bypass, there was a bypass capacitor, but let's take a look at the schematic here. Okay, so we're actually looking at a photograph of that piece of paper. So um, let's just look and see around the perimeter. Hmm. Well, here's the connection to the chassis, which, which we saw. Here's the antenna. So, so there's a rod inside, and there's a pickup coil here, and it's delivering the signal to the grid of the tube. Then there's this additional coil here, and out to the wire antenna. Now there's a little piece of wire hanging out the back of the radio. That's got to be where you connect this antenna if you want to use it. So if you put an extra antenna on, it'll transform the signal into this coil, and off it'll go. Or if you don't want to do that, you just rely on this rod. Okay, very good. Um, so this this is not as common a tube as, uh, at least I don't think this is a very common tube, 6BJ6. It's got two of them in here in the RF positions. Here it's doing the... Uh, the uh, IF amplification of the IF signal, and here it's doing the amplification of the signal right off the antenna. This is what makes this a good radio. And if you look at the tuning, there's three sections in the capacitor, and with these dotted lines show you the connected sections. So one of them is tuning right out front here. One is tuning just ahead of the mixer. So it's, it's tuning against this. And one of them is, of course, tuning the uh, local oscillator. Nicely laid out schematic here. It, it practically reads itself. You can see the output of the oscillator coil is fed to grid number one. You can see grid number two is connected as a screen, but in fact is going to be uh, oh, it's going to be operating hesitation, hesitation. I was going to say it's going to be operating as a plate, and then there'd be feedback from this circuit. I don't exactly see it. So anyway, somehow they've arranged feedback here. Somehow, here we go. <laughs> stop explaining, Jim. You're lost. Okay, I will. I will stop. Um, and just carrying on. It's all kind of standard stuff. 12 AV6, very common tube. 50 L635. Volume control capacitor here. And the grid of the output tube. And there's a capacitor here. This is the one I'm interested in right now. This one here. 0 0.005. Uh, what I'm concerned about is that this capacitor is leaky. And all old radios capacitors become leaky. Uh, some capacitors are in locations where a little leak doesn't really matter but others are in critical locations. This is definitely a critical location here. A small leak will allow a charge to develop on this grid. How big is this resistor here? This is the tone control here. This is a gem, this is a tone control. <laughs> I'm staring at it going, what is going on here? That's a tone control. This is the volume control over here. That makes more sense. Okay. I'm okay. Don't worry. I'm okay. Looks like some feedback is 
I don't know what's going on here again. Stop trying to explain it, but something is being fed into the back of this. And if I'm control, probably uh, could be designed to boost the bass and treble when the volume is set low. Otherwise known as a loudness control. Okay, everything's pretty normal here. Um, uh, here's another capacitor that's probably important to change because it's right across the power line. Um, everything is pretty normal otherwise. Okay, so let's find this capacitor. C13.005 off the grid of the 50L6. You might want to concern ourselves with this one too. Coming down, coming down. Well, there's a another capacitor here. Won't worry about it right now. We'll just worry about this one. This is the one that could leak some positive voltage onto the grid. So what we'll do is we'll measure the grid potential here and the cathode potential or voltage here. Uh, we'll check the resistor and see that the bias voltage is, is in range. Okay, that's good. That's the plan. Okay, so earlier on I mentioned there's one of these uh, packages here um, that contains quite a few components. One of the components that this thing contains is the capacitor I'm interested in. That's the grid blocking capacitor for the output tube. The uh, grid is on this terminal here. And there's just a wire just going right into the, uh, looks like maybe the third spot. There's a lot of wires in this thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven wires uh, going in and out of this thing. Okay, so, but if in fact the capacitor inside here is substantially leaky, well, the solution is to put an additional capacitor in line with it here. And uh, that'll, that'll correct the problem. If there is a problem, I have the voltmeter connected here. We're gonna be using this voltmeter over here this guy. Set them on uh, um, and we'll have positive voltage and we'll stick it on 50 volts. You know what? Maybe we'll put it up at 150 to start with. Where's my, where's the lead? Way over here. Okay. Now without this set on I'm going to practice. Um, so it's really pretty easy. I just got to do this. Now, the uh, other other pin was pin number 8, I think it was, wasn't it? 8. 8 is here. 8, you can see this green wire coming from the uh, bypass capacitor. And the resistor involved is right there. It says 20. No, it's not that. It's not, can't, can't be that, can it? That's, looks like red, red, yellow. Well, maybe it's red, red, brown. So red, red, brown would be uh, 220, that's right, that's what it is. Okay, everything's adding up, we're ready to go here. Everything is adding up. We're gonna make sure the volume is low, not that it really matters, and away we go. Okay, one of the things we might be interested in is what is the B plus. Now by the way, th this ground is going to the B minus line inside the radio. It's not on the chassis. And I'm using this lighter uh, wire so I don't have this great big metal clip sticking out in the radio. Okay, I can hear the radio. There we are. Let's look at the B plus first. So 150 volts full scale here. That's 95. And the other one anxious to touch this one here. That's a little, that's not much higher, it's 80. It's pretty low. We're hitting 104. Seems a little low, but what are you going to do? Okay, so now we're going to look for the uh, positive voltage, small voltage showing up on this line right here. So watching the meter. So virtually no movement here. So we're going to make this one and a half volts full scale. 
What do you show? There's nothing happening there. It's a little weird we can't hear this coming out of the speaker. I would expect to hear a lot of clicking and, and, and noises. Did I count these right? Maybe I'm on the wrong pin. So the socket actually has the pin numbers right on it. Two, three, four. No, I'm on the right, the right one. Five. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, voltage, the uh, bias voltage. So we'll find that right here. Okay, on uh, 15 volt scale, uh, it's only measuring 5. Why, why was it going wild over here? I had the other scale on the meter at the time. Yeah, same reading. 5 volts. 5 volts, that's not very much. Let me check it again. Five volts drop on the uh, on the resistor. Low B plus is probably causing this. Oh, radio just changed a little bit. What happened to the B plus just now? Oh, 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 oh! <laughs> Some, something's doing this thing again. Oh, that's not the B plus, Jim. Well, it's 95 here. Still 80 there, so it seems to have gone up a lot right here. So unless I'm mistaken, and I, I probably am, it wasn't 95 before. I think I'm mistaken about that. So the results of this test is there is no positive voltage developing on the grid. There's no leak through the capacitor in here of any significance. The B plus as we've discovered is a little low in the radio, but I'm unsure what's going on. It did seem to shift between two states of operation while we're doing this, but I can't be sure of any of that. So one, one thing we 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 we're probably finding out that all these capacitors are pretty good, and uh, changing them out is not going to do much for this radio. And the fact that this thing appears to be good—I mean, it's just one one test, and not a very good test. The radio itself operating is really a better test. Well, at this point, what I would conclude is. Uh, not not worth the effort to go in and change all these capacitors not at this point next step would be to make sure the radio is aligned well and then and then assess it at that point because uh, because I, I I don't like doing work for no good reason and I think it's a wrong move to just come in and just automatically change capacitors um, in, in some cases maybe that's right but in, in other cases are, are we not trying to preserve these things and if you get one that's working, um, why, why, why? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna ponder. Oh, just went quiet again. Perfect. Quickly get the voltmeter. Jim, grab your voltmeter. What, 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 what did you do with it? Here it is. Here it is. It's the gray wire. Hurry, hurry, man, quick. Ninety. That same voltage there. It's going to be the same here. 
80, always 80 there. 93 here. So, so, so I don't know what's going on. Um, if the B plus were going up and down, what would that mean? Oh, it could mean uh, probably a tube current is, is changing, and that's probably because of a voltage on a tube. That's probably changing because, wow, well, resistor, capacitor, bad connection. We could, we could still have uh, two pin connections causing these things. Maybe one of those capacitors is bad. I should change them all. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm going to leave it at that today. Um, tomorrow we'll attend to the alignment. Now all I have is this uh, schematic, but it's a straightforward radio, so I think I can probably pull it off. Uh, just winging it, and we'll see what we can get out of it. So thanks a lot for watching today. Um, i got to get ready for all the snow. See ya.